everyone. Welcome to the NYU Stern Consulting Webinar. Thank you all so much for tuning in during your lunch break or after hours or in the morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, before we get started, would you mind typing into the chat box to make sure that the sound is working for everyone? Um, a quick all good or um, I can hear you work. Excellent. That's great. All right, perfect. Well, to get started, um, I'd love to introduce myself and our panelists, tell you a little bit about Stern this afternoon, um, specifically focusing on consulting opportunities here and what those job opportunities will look like for you as a Sterny. My name is Katie. I am an assistant director in the Office of MBA Admissions here at Stern. Previously to working on the admissions team, I was part of the corporate relations team, which was in the Office of Career Development. So I've been closely connected to the consulting landscape at Stern now from a number of different perspectives for the past few years here. Being on the admissions team at Stern has been a great way to learn more about how our prospective students and current students make their consulting dreams um, turn into success, success stories once they're here. That begins not only through the consulting opportunities, which our students who are participating in this webinar will tell you more about, but it begins with the opportunity to take coursework that will help prepare you for consulting, as well as connecting with our alumni community. At Stern, uh, whether you are, this is the first session that you are turning, tuning into, or you have already attended one of our live or in-person events, as a recap and to give you some background, we have over 20 specializations that you can choose from. This includes over 200 electives, and from these courses and specializations, you have the chance to select up to three while you're an MBA student here. And while there are specializations that run the gamut of healthcare to social innovation, some that tend to be particularly popular for students who are pursuing careers in consulting include management, strategy, leadership and change management, as well as global business. These are great ways to help you prepare for your consulting career journey and indicate interest to these firms that you are hoping to to transition into a role in consulting or continue on in your career path. Now, before diving too much into our other types of experiential coursework and our student club that will help prepare you for the consulting world, I'd love to give our student panelists a chance to introduce themselves and uh, tell you a little bit more about their journey at Stern. I decided to come here this year, but I just got uh, in consulting and I go into my uh, technical and analytical skills as well as uh, bring my own production experience. Uh, this past summer, um, I was uh, in a company in the London office and I had a great, uh, great summer experience. During my first year at Stern, um, I quickly had everything um, I needed. Okay, I hear we have some technical difficulties. Can you hear me better now? Excellent, great. So I'll start again. So 
Welcome all. It's very, uh, very nice to be here. My name is Matias. Uh, I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I did my uh, undergrad major in business economics in Argentina. Uh, Pre-Stern, I worked in the wine industry for five years, basically in marketing and sales. So promoting our, our wines and brands uh, first in the Asian markets and then in the U.S. markets. Uh, this summer, um, I did my summer internship at Bain and Company in London. And uh, as I was saying before, during the first year uh, here at Stern, um, I had a lot of tools and resources that helped me be successful both in the recruiting process as well as in my uh, summer internship. And that resulted in getting a full-time offer after my MBA. So after um, my second year here at Stern, I will be going back to, uh, to London uh, to pursue my career at Bain & Company. Hello everyone, my name is Navidi, second uh, year MBA at Stern. Originally born and raised in the Boston area, grew up in Brockton, Massachusetts, which is about 20 minutes south. Um, my parents are immigrants from Nigeria. Uh, I did my undergraduate studies at Harvard College, where I was an economics major and also played football. Um, after college, I pursued a career in the NFL, where I was a linebacker and defensive end. Um, after that was over for me, I transitioned to a career in finance. First worked in sales and trading on the uh, cash equities trading desk. Then I transitioned to equity, re equity research where I covered the restaurants and consumer staples sectors for two years. Uh, transitioned to B-School here at Stern to build out my strategy toolkit and to transition to a role in consulting. Uh, fortunately, I was able to land an offer with McKinsey and Company uh, this past summer and was fortunate enough to also get a full-time offer and we'll be going back there uh, full-time. Um, my club involvement here at Stern is within Stern in Africa or SIA where I'm the co-president and also with Abis where I'm the VP of admissions for Abis. Great and we apologize for any any uh, audio challenges earlier. Please feel free to chat in the chat box if you're having difficulty hearing us and we'll do our best to uh, make sure that you are able to hear everything that our student panelists have to share with you all this afternoon. So as you already have a sense from Pius and Namdi, many people come to Stern to transition and consulting. But if you're at the beginning of your career journey, you might still be wondering what, what is consulting all about and what are the job opportunities in that space. Um, so to start off, we're going to learn a little bit, little bit more about that. Um, please give us one moment to adjust. All right, perfect. Um, so Namdi and Matias, well, would you tell us a little bit more about what does consulting mean? Um, what are the different jobs that prospective students might be looking at upon graduating from? Yeah, sure, so I'll take this one. Um, so the great thing about consulting is that um, they're looking for all types of people with different backgrounds. So to give a quick overview of what that entails, um, and consulting could be operational consulting, it could be the broader strategy consulting, diligence consulting, um, and it could be everything from financial restructuring, company restructuring, profitability, um, market share growth, which is more top line growth and market entry. Um, so I think the biggest thing here is under, under understanding that consulting runs the gamut, and there really isn't one specific sort of person that consultancies are looking for. It's more so, do you fill a need for us? And do you possess one of the many skill sets that could be, that, that could be um, successful at a consulting firm? I see we're having technical difficulties again. Just give us a second, please.
All right. Can you hear us better now? All right. We sincerely apologize about the difficulties earlier on. Um, clearly, this is consulting, not a technology at Stern webinar, and we are doing our best. So we appreciate your patience. Um, so we'll take a step back and do a quick overview about consulting. Um, so that we're, we're all on the same page about what that term means. So the question asked was originally, what is consulting? When people say they want to go into careers in consulting, what are the jobs that they're thinking about and what is the work that a consultant does? So um, consulting in a nutshell is essentially just driving value for the client beyond what they can do that by themselves. Um, and that goes into different categories. It could be within operations, it could be within analytics, strategy, um, diligence. And within those, it could be um, restructuring, more top line growth, profitability issues, market share growth. So it really runs the gamut. And the big thing to remember here is that consultancies are, are looking for a broader range of skill sets. There's not one particular type of skill set that they're looking for since they're so large. They're, they're looking for a team of people who can add value. And if you possess a certain skill set that can add to that team, then you could make a great consultant. Just to add on uh, what Namdi was saying, uh, for me, it was very interesting to actually do um, this summer uh, as, a, as a consultant because I really realized that the project I was working on was just one of the many things that that a consultant could do i was actually in a in a, um, a cost cutting project um in the summer but i realized while i talked to my peers that there are an enormous gamut of projects so that's something that really stimulated me to accept the job for her and go back to consulting because there's no day where it's going to be uh exactly like the one the one before. Every day is different. Every challenge and every client is different. Uh, so that for me was uh, very stimulating. And uh, you'll finish up doing uh, a range of functions and jobs uh, around the job. That's great. And I'm just glad to see that there are a few different buckets that consulting roles can fall under. Operations, strategy, specialty analytics, diligence, Nafi Matias, what industries were your consulting internship experiences in? So mine was kind of a little bit of two things. Um, so it was also it was a broad strategy, um, competitive response study or case with also some operational restructuring aspects to it. So I was at a large bank here in the city um, and uh, we were doing a uh, operational restructuring for them because they divested a large portion of the business. Um, so I got to see both the large, broad, blue sky strategy approach to consulting, but also the more, you know, white glove, client specific restructuring operational aspects as well. So in my case, I was working for a construction company in the UK that was uh, uh, really struggling financially. So my project was all about uh, resource optimization and uh, also cost restructuring. So it was about uh, finding additional cost saving opportunities uh, for our clients to, um, to um, actually enhance their current uh, financial turnover, their current financial situation. And once that happened, we were gonna start developing a strategy of how to maintain uh, that position. types of job opportunities might look like in consulting, though, as Matthias and Namdi mentioned, projects range in types of uh, types of opportunities that you might be looking into, industries that you might be working with. Then thinking about from lens of a prospective student who is preparing themselves for a role at a consultancy firm, what are these firms looking for in candidates and how do you show that to a consulting firm? 
Yeah, great. So I think um, it's interesting to take point that, you know, at the MBA level, you're coming in a couple of rungs higher than you would if you were coming in as an undergrad. So it's almost like an amalgamation of a, of a few different roles. So you're coming in expecting to take on leadership roles, but also do a lot of the analytics and problem solving as well. So you're kind of in the middle. Um, so a lot of the consultancies are, lo are looking for people who can communicate and have great presence. Um, also are, are, are able to walk through a business process pretty accurately and clearly. Um, you're, you're able to look at numbers and analyze them quickly and be able to um, sort of strip away and, and, and get some insight from them. And also you're willing to lead. Um, you have experience leading in the, in the past and you're not afraid to lead when you're at the firm as well. Um, and I think the biggest thing that they look for in the interview process or just looking for, for candidates is like self-confidence, um, that you're humble, but also very, very confident in what you know, but also confident in what you don't know as well. And I think that's also a very important thing. Yeah, just to sum up what, what Namdi was saying, um, I think it's extremely important, uh, the self-confidence part and the leadership part, because uh, once you go into the summer and a full-time job, uh, they're expected for you to, first of all, be independent in your line of work. You're probably going to have a, a, a line of work or a stream where you have to take absolute autonomy um, and responsibility for that, and you have to be able, able to do so. And secondly, they want to know if, if, if they can put you in front of clients and they're confident that, that you will perform. So obviously, communication and presence is very important. Self-confidence is very important. And this part about owning your actual uh, work and be able to talk about it, I think it's very important. Additionally, uh, because consulting is uh, long hours and it's also always a, a team effort and collaborative effort, there is this informal thing called the airport test, which a lot of consulting firms uh, talk about, which is basically if they're stranded with you uh, two hours or six hours in an airport, um, do they want to be beside you, right? So there's, you also have to bring a human component in consulting because you have a lot of, again, client interaction and team interaction. that you would have for a role at a company that it falls within a different industry. Um, we'll talk a bit more in, later on about the recruiting process. Um, can you share a little bit about what that experience is like interviewing for a consulting internship and how you're able to communicate these qualities that consulting, for, consulting firms are looking for? Yeah, so I'm sure, as many of you probably know, the interview process is mainly based around the case study. Um, so the case is essentially a microcosm of what the day-to-day -day life of, of, of a consultant is. And it touches on all four of these buckets that we talked about, being able to communicate what the, what the business problem is and how you're thinking about it and how you're gonna look to solve it. And also understanding the business aspects that are at play within the problem. Um, and then I'll, I'll, there's always a numbers aspect to it. So how, how good are you with quick math? Can you create your math um, in a way where people can understand it clearly and see it clearly? And also, um, are you able to lead the case and drive the case forward? I think that's also speaking to the leadership aspect of it. Um, being able to be autonomous and say, hey, you know what? This problem looks like this and I like to, uh, to, to understand it better. I'd like to look at this aspect of the issue. So um, in terms of uh, what to expect, um, as Namdi was saying, basically uh, you'll get um, a case study where you have to solve uh, the case in about 20 to 25 minutes. So you'll probably uh, be in a room with uh, either a, a manager or a consultant uh, in the role and uh, you'll be given, you'll be given a, a case in about, again, 25 minutes to, uh, to, to resolve. I think just to add on, on on what Namdi was saying, I think, yes, you do get testing and all those skills, but also it's important um, to, to bring your personality to the table, right? I was talking a little bit about um, the importance of, of having this kind of like relationship and, and human skills. And imagine uh, these recruiters, uh, they're going to be in this same room um, interviewing at least 10 applicants that day. Uh, so it is very important to give your personal touch to uh, all of the cases. Um, summing to that, the great majority of the companies not only have a case study, but they also leave about 
15, 10 to 15 minutes for a behavioral uh, interview and questions. And that is a little bit more of uh, the typical interview question of just tell me a time when or describe a challenge and how you faced it, um, which is a little bit more aligned to the other industry standards of an interview. Also, um, a little bit to test stamina. Uh, usually you don't have only one case, but interviews uh, are uh, usually two cases. So two different person uh, people uh, actually give you a case in the interview. So all the process is about an hour and a half. We are pulling up the slides for the presentation as we are in real time, making sure that you all are able to see those. Um, so that was a, a quick overview about what the interview process would look like for these firms and how it might be different from a previous job interview that you've gone on. Um, and all that is to say that the school, the, will help support you throughout the process. And we're going to dive into that a bit more at this point. Um, so to, to start off thinking about career opportunities at Stern, we see on this slide a handful of companies that come here to recruit on campus. This is, like we said, just a number of the many firms. Um, these are some of the top consulting firms that our stu students go to work at after graduation. And to give you some context, our employment report for the class of 2019 recently came out and we would love to highlight that our top industry that Stern students go into is consulting with 37.1% of our students accepting an offer to a consulting firm this past year. Um, something interesting to note along those lines is that our consulting, our students interested in going into consulting has been on the rise. From 2017 until 2019, that number has gone from 26% up to the 37.1% that we see this year. And if we were to further look into the consulting role as a functional position, meaning someone who doesn't necessarily go to work at a consulting firm, but has those responsibilities, 45.3% of our stu students went into a functional based consulting role last year after graduating from Stern. So while Stern has a strong reputation in finance, technology, fashion, luxury, it's really important to note that many of our students are interested in pursuing roles at consulting firms upon graduation which allows our current students to also then network with all of the alums at these firms, many of whom are staying in New York City while traveling during the week on projects are available to come back on campus and help support you through your career journey. And of these firms listed on this slide, the top four employers last year for our full-time MBA graduating class, all four of them are actually on this slide. Um, Deloitte and McKinsey were our top two employers, each taking 17 sternies, and BCG and EY were our next top employers, each taking 14 stern students. You can see that a number of our current students pursue roles at these companies upon graduation and have an incredible network of support on campus and upon graduation to uh, reach out to, to find the right position for that. And Matias and Namdi, um, amongst all of the consulting firms out there, can you talk a little bit about how students figure out which one is the right fit for that. I can take this one. So um, 
once you uh, get admitted to Stern, uh, after the first month, recruiting uh, process um, starts getting uh, very busy. So the first point of contact that you will all have with, with these firms are through corporate presentations. So the fact that Stern is very well positioned here in New York City, um, usually all the companies come here to campus um, and they host this corporate presentation when where they do just a brief presentation of um, the basics about the company, but most interestingly, they uh, bring um, a lot of consultants and managers and even partners uh, to talk to um, to the students that are interested in the firm. So that is the first point of contact that students have with the actual firm, and it's a great first uh, feeling that you get about what does the company do? Do I feel a fit with this company? Is this something I'm interested in and want to pursue? Um, the second uh, part of the process um, is the great majority of this firms host coffee chats. Sometimes it's one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes it's two-on-one, -on -one, but basically what they do is they bring consultants and managers to campus um, and you can schedule your 20-minute uh, interview with them. So that is a little bit more personal where you can make a little bit more of um, tailor the questions to actually your interest. So for example, in my uh, case, I was interested in international offices and I took this, um, this coffee chats to be the first thing that tested the water if I actually wanted to go abroad or I wanted to stay um, here in, in the US. And then uh, after that, after the coffee chats, some of the companies, not all, uh, host some uh, closed list events where basically they invite uh, a number of students to different events. This can be uh, dinners or meals, or I remember some companies taking us to comedy shows or even Soul Cycle. So basically it's a way to actually get to know you better. And uh, again, understand this fit part uh, with the company. Am I forgetting something, Namdi? No, that's awesome. I'm caught up in the process of the um, though they do work in the same space, they are very different, both in whether it's culture, fit, the type of work that they do. So, for example, if you're really interested in private equity, and I think Bain is one of the biggest players in that, in that space. If you want to do uh, digital or operations, Deloitte or McKinsey might be a better fit for you. Um, so it definitely depends on you know, what you're looking to get into and the type of work that you want to do. So meeting these companies is a great point to ask those questions and really dive deeper beyond just culture, but more so, you know, what kind of offices that they have, what kind of work they do, and whether they really enjoy the work that they do. Yeah. And as briefly mentioned earlier, the alumni network is in, an integral part of the recruiting experience because these touch points that Matthias and Namdi have been talking about, whether those are corporate presentations or coffee chats, oftentimes they're being done by employees who are Stern alums, who are hoping to bring future Sternies to the company upon graduation and also provides a shared connection that you'll have with those individuals throughout the recruiting process. All right, so moving on to what resources you have available to you as a Sterney to help you succeed in terms of landing a position at a consulting firm. Namdi, can you talk a little bit about what the Office of Career Development provides for students when they arrive at Stern? Yeah, so OCP is kind of like the first volley into recruiting. Um, they do a lot of the sort of polishing up when you first get here before you get thrown to MCA. Um, so essentially the first thing they do is review your resume and essentially tailor it towards the function that you want to have in the industry that you want to get into. Um, and I think that's a great way to go beyond the standard MBA uh, sort of looking resume and more detailed, more sort of drilling deep into, you know, okay, I want to get into consulting, but what does that mean and how to how can I tailor my resume to help me get there? And then um, after that, um, MCA tends to look at, you know, how can we help you kind of create the skills to get to where you want to get to? So the practice interviews, which tend to happen, I think November, December time, um, is a great way for you to tailor your interview skills and OCD helps to facilitate that. Uh, also the elevator pitch that Matias talked about um, earlier is essentially 
Um, you know, your 30 second pitch, if you meet somebody and they ask, okay, so what are you about? Um, and OCD walks you through how to create a pitch. Um, and, and it's a great way to kind of, you know, create that first touch point. Um, and OCD uh, Spear has the on-campus recruiting process. So those presentations that were mentioned before are, um, are spearheaded by OCD. And also they, OCD uh, covers the coffee chats and the networking events. So all the touch points with these companies are um, spearheaded by OCD. And they're your first line of defense or your first touch point when you get to campus. Well, there are many events that are happening during the fall semester when you are a first year to prepare you for this process, um, meeting with companies through these corporate presentations and coffee chats, because all of that is led and organized by the Office of Career Development um, in coordination with the Management Consulting Association, of course. Those events are strategically organized so that you're able to maximize your opportunity to go to as many as possible and meet with as many different companies to figure out the best fit for you and meet multiple members of their teams to ensure that you are making the right choice when that time comes. Then thinking about the Management Consulting Association, our Office of Career Development, as Namdi said, leads the recruiting process. But MCA, as we call our Management Consulting Association, helps prepare students throughout the first semester of their first year, or also helps those second year students who might be considering a career in consulting after a different summer internship experience. Matthias, can you tell us a little bit more about what the Management Consulting Association provides for current MBA students? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I think an important point is that um, OCD is an office uh, of Stern, uh, and MCA is actually a student-led club. So basically, um, the second year full-time MBA students uh, will be uh, leading this club as you come in. And the main idea of this club is to give you all of the tools for you to be successful in the recruiting process. Um, I mean, it's in our best intention as Stern student, as well as uh, just uh, reinforcing our collaborative community that everyone that wants to pursue a career in management consulting can do so. And that's why the MCA offers um, all of this uh, opportunities for you to tighten those skills. So as we talked before with Namdi, casing is a very, very important part of the interview process. And that's basically what MCA uh, focus on predominantly. So what you'll have is um, a casing bootcamp. This was a very uh, useful um, bootcamp for me because it, it starts um, teaching you the basics of how to actually case. And what, ba what, a, what the bootcamp is, is uh, about, it's basically it's an hour and a half every week where you will actually um, start understanding how uh, does a case work? How do you have to organize your thoughts? How do you have to lead the case to get to that answer that uh, the management consulting firms uh, are expecting? In tandem with that, um, we also have the casing study groups that actually reinforces everything that you've done in the casing bootcamp. So the casing study groups are smaller groups. So the casing bootcamp is just a, imagine a big, uh, lecture class of about a hundred students that are interested in management consulting. The casing study groups are actually groups of four or five where you'll have a mentor. The mentor is an MBA too that actually has been successful in the recruiting uh, process and will actually deep dive on those techniques that the casing bootcamp had taught you uh, the week before. In my opinion, this was one of the most um, helpful skills for me. Um, because actually here was where I uh, deepen and tighten uh, those skills that I actually needed to, uh, to crack the case. Um, additionally, you'll see in the list the mocktail. This was also very interesting because we talked about corporate presentations, but especially um, for if you come from a different industry or I that I came from a different country, this networking events where you have like one consultant of the firm and like five to six uh, perspective um, or students there, it's actually very hard to understand how to address these people. And the mocktail basically is um, MCA hosted a simulation of what actually corporate presentations will be. Uh, and they give you feedback of how to approach uh, these people um, going back to Namdi's and the 30 second elevator pitch, you can, it's a way to, way to practice there. So this was also very, very, um, 
useful. Um, following up, I mean, I think we already talked about the coffee chats, but the good thing about the, um, the being in the full-time MBA program is you have your summer, but then you have your second year. So eventually, if you want to transition or you didn't like your summer or you actually want to uh, uh, choose another company, you can still recruit uh, for management consulting in the second year, and MCA offers um, a lot of support as well. Um, Finally, we have a super case day. Um, this, once um, students start uh, mastering the art of, of casing and when we get closer to the actual uh, interview invites, MCA does a great job bringing a lot of alumni and also um, MBA twos that will actually case uh, MBA ones on a super day. So this is a, a simulation of what the interviews will be like. And the great thing is that alumni that are actually working in the company that could potentially be your interviewers are actually interviewing you. So the feedback that you receive that day, it's extremely critical to um, that kind of like last 100 meter sprint to get you on the optimal point uh, before the interviews. And then finally, and this um, runs specifically for people that are interested in international um, offices, MCA also offers tracks. The most uh, common one is the London Trek. So MCA usually during Thanksgiving organizes with the big management consulting firms in London and takes students uh, that are interested in pursuing their career in international offices to London uh, to meet uh, the people there and the offices there and actually understand what are the difference between local offices and, um, and international offices. I know this seems like a lot, but the important thing and message that you have to um, to get from this slide is basically MCA is there to help you. And as I said before, without both the offers, Office of Career Development and MCA, it was impossible for me to be successful in this process, but they actually give you all the tools that you need to be successful. You went to intern at a consulting firm in London, correct? Yes. Yeah. What was the experience like interning internationally? So um, I think it was a, a great experience. Part of the reason I chose uh, Stern and decided to leave Argentina was to, to become a more, um, I mean, global leader um, and global, um, yeah, business leader. And London was uh, something that I was always looking for. In terms of, of, of the company specifically and the international offices versus the US, I think that a lot of companies do a great job. I mean, they're very international, so they do a great job maintaining uh, a very strong uh, brand identity and culture across all business offices. But it's true that um, some offices can differ a little bit in the industries uh, they, they practice. There is also a cultural component um, that, uh, that, is, uh, that is different to uh, domestic offices. But all in all, for me, um, it, was, uh, it was actually uh, a great experience. Um, you mentioned that alumni and how they are involved with not only the coffee chats that happen on campus, but also our super case day, the interviews that are happening. We oftentimes will attend corporate presentations to network with our current students. They are an incredible resource to help make you successful since they have already gone through the experience and landed offers on the other end. As mentioned, many of them are based in New York City and whether they are available to meet up through one of the many scheduled Stern events or offline at a different location, whether it's their company office or someplace in the city, they make themselves available to the current students as they go through this recruiting process. And we've heard about the different components that are involved from attending corporate presentations and coffee chats and interviews. Um, Matias and Namadi, can you walk us through what that timeline would like look like for a new MBA one when they arrive at Stern? So what people notice here is that everything sort of builds on each other. So it's like a like a ramp up to the big day in mid to late January of interviewing. So to start, like I mentioned before, um, in August and September, you're essentially crafting your resume with OCB and your career mentor. Um, and that's where you're creating a resume that's specifically tailored um, for consulting shops and tailored to sort of land you 
that first interest from consultancies. Um, and also in September, um, your MCA boot camp begins. And that's like essentially, I think that starts second week of school about, and it runs um, right up through um, towards like the mid to late October and early November portion. Um, and that's where you're learning the, the key skills for how to walk through a case and work through a case and how to build a proper casing framework. Um, also in September, you have your presentations um, that run through early, early November, and that's where you get your first chance to meet a lot of these companies and to network and create those, those relationships. And you also start your formal casing prep um, in tandem with the MBA bootcamp. Um, in October is where a lot of the kind of like, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat starts. So you have the coffee chats and informal interviews with firms. Um, and that's a great point of, you know, contact for understanding, okay, so what do these firms do? How does this particular function fit, with, fit, with, fit within a firm? And how do I see myself fitting there? Um, you're also, you also have the firm-specific case competitions. So over the last few years, we've had a bunch of case competitions. I know there's a big Deloitte one. Um, Deloitte is both a Deloitte tech case comp competition, and also a Deloitte strategy one. Um, and then also there's a, there was a large Amazon case competition that just happened a couple weeks ago. So it's a great opportunity to really, un to really get a chance to see what it's like to be a consultant and work through a real life um, big picture uh, sort of strategy or technology or digital problem from start to finish. And then you get to present your case to real consultants from those from those firms and you get ranked and you get feedback. Um, you continue to case throughout October um, and then you have your casing workshops and behavioral prep through the month of November. Um, towards the, I, think, I believe it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, towards the end of the month of November, you're submitting your resumes to, to um, for interviews and you're going to invite only events uh, and the invite only events are events that firms have just to get to know people better. Um, getting invited to one doesn't mean you're gonna get an interview and not getting invited to one um, doesn't mean you won't get an interview. So I think, um, I, I think that's important to note there. Um, then in the month of December, um, when, when everybody else is on break, uh, you will be, we were all casing, uh, polishing up on that. Um, you essentially are you know, casing throughout the whole break and really, getting, um, like shoring up your weak spots uh, to make sure that you bring your best self on your big day. Um, and also during that month of December is the big alumni super case day where you're essentially, you come in dressed to the nines and you go through a, a full length uh, interview day. And then you get um, real time feedback from the alumni who are casing you. Um, and then towards the end of the month of December, you receive the interview invites um, definitely a nerve-wracking point of time, time of year, but I think it's also a great time because a lot of your hard work pays off. Um, and then throughout January, you're doing mock interviews with, 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 with firms and OCD to prepare you for the formal um, interviews that you're going to see both first and second round in the month of January. And then after that, hopefully you have an offer and you accept it uh, sometime during January. Great. And we noticed that we have a few questions coming in. We love to see those. And we will leave about 10 minutes at the end of the presentation to answer your questions. So thank you for your patience um, as we are wrapping up the end of the presentation and we will get to those questions that you have. Just one quick note before we move on to some of the co-curricular activities that are available to our students. The firm-specific case competitions are an incredible way to build out those skill sets, as Namdi was mentioning. Um, I know that our group of Sternies won the Deloitte case competition last year. These are not only a way to build those skills and hone in on your consulting expertise, whether that's through analyt analytical projects or marketing-based projects, um, but oftentimes these case competitions come with monetary prizes or offers to work at these firms in the summer. So definitely a great way for students to get some additional experience working for companies uh, before the summer internship process. 
Great. And before we open it up to questions uh, from the audience, I'd love to talk a little bit more about what additional opportunities outside of the Office of Career Development, and we've already touched upon the Management Consulting Association, but what other ways can a current student start to prepare for consulting roles through courses or experiential learning opportunities? Yeah, so one of the things I, I love about uh, the Stern program is all the uh, experiential learning opportunities that the curriculum uh, actually has to offer. And big of that piece is basically, again, being here in, in New York City and having access to, uh, to am amazing firms and, and projects. So, uh, for example, I mean, we talked already about the MCA, but Stern Consulting Corps, that is a three credit course that you can take here at Stern, where you basically are a consultant uh, for um, the whole uh, semester. So you get assigned uh, to, first of all, to your group, um, and then you get assigned to a company and actually uh, a, a consulting job, right? Like a company has um, a problem, a challenge that they're facing um, and uh, you together with your peers, you're gonna actually work as a consultant for the company. Obviously, you're not a full-time employee. So um, in terms of um, time, this is gonna be uh, time demand. This is gonna be very different to an actual uh, consulting summer job, but it does get very close to what the actual uh, work is and during the course of this semester you'll get together once a week um, with uh, usually a, a professor um, here at Stern where they will coach you and try to help you in the strategy of how to uh, how to actually tackle uh, this project. Same thing with the Stern Signature Projects that's actually a, a course I took last year. Um, the main difference basically is that some of Stern Signature Projects are actually international so for me, um, I, uh, I helped um, um, a restaurant uh, holding in Mexico City uh, that was actually analyzing how to expand uh, their delivery service. And I was looking at creating strategic alliances with uh, some of the um, suppliers of um, real-time delivery and, and apps and, and whatever. So um, that was a very, very interesting project for me. It gave me the international exposure that what I was actually looking for, um, as well as those basic um, consulting skills that uh, came very handy for the summer of just like working with time pressure, working on my work stream, uh, working with uh, a team, interacting in um, weekly meetings with a client. So um, all of this uh, co-curricular co activities that Stern have to offer are actually very, very valuable for two things. First of all, to test if you actually like the consulting work, and second of all, try to prepare you to what uh, the summer will, um, will bring for you, which gives you very valuable skills. mentioned, for example, the Consulting Lab Branding and Innovation. That is a experiential learning course that many students will ask these classes sound incredible. Am I able to actually get into the classes? And the answer is yes. Our enrollment for the classes is done by lottery. However, when the school sees a need to add more classes, they will do so. There's very much a conversation between the current students as well as the administration about what classes are adding value. And consulting Lab Branding and Innovation is one of our most popular experiential learning courses where they bring in a different client each semester that the students work with. So this semester, the client for that class is Spotify. And groups of students, as Matthias was saying, work to solve a business problem. And oftentimes students will put this experience on their resume. Um, the winning group will be presenting to a C-suite group of individuals from the company and Anecdotally, that we have certainly heard of students who are then able to get job offers after these consulting-based projects with those firms. And Namdi, have you taken any consulting-based classes or experiential learning courses that have been helpful? Yes, I actually took um, not experiential learning, but I took a consulting-based course um, last semester as a night class with some mm -hmm. part-time students. 
Um, and it was called Design Thinking for Managers. Um, and it's based on the ideal process of design thinking, like thinking outside the box and problem solving using kind of like non cookie cutter approaches. Um, so there's also opportunities to get the consulting um, toolkit or consulting experience that are outside of the experiential learning process that you can just take a regular course here. Great. Well, we want to leave a few minutes for some Q&A from any, any members who are in the audience. Um, but before we, we get to the questions that are coming in, just wanted to say thank you all for, for joining and that if you do have uh, further questions that we aren't able to get to, you are welcome to email our office account or our graduate ambassadors who are joining us today. Um, we will share that information through the chat box so that you have those points of contact moving forward. Um, so to start, we see a few questions are coming through. Yeah, so I'll take the first one. Uh, the question is regarding operations and, and consulting, and are there any specific office locations for those that want to get into operations consulting? Um, the great thing about that is that you, there really is no specific office location. Um, when it comes to operations, you can do that work anywhere in the country that you're located or even abroad. Um, so that's actually great. Obviously, I, I think when it comes to certain industries, so if you want to do operations with, within tech, or operations within healthcare or finance. Um, obviously, the, the Northeast, New York, Boston may make more sense, but if it's just broader operations, then there really is no specific office or location that will make you, I guess, that will get you more exposure to that. So that's actually a good thing. So I see a question here regarding, we talked about first year and second year, so the full-time MBA um, regarding uh, the comparison with part-time enrolled students. So part-time enrolled students have access to all of what um, MCA actually um, has to provide. Actually, um, this uh, last month I did help uh, some part-timers to that had um, interviews to prepare for uh, to prepare for their interviews, but usually because of time constraints, uh, they aren't able to participate in everything MCA has to uh, has to offer. One of the um, extracurricular or just learning processes. Um, so it's actually a really cool one. Um, so it's essentially an uh, experiential learning class you take where you partner with one of the mission-driven organizations in New York City. Um, obviously, a lot of these orgs don't have the don't have the funds to hire a full-time um, like large consultancy, so they'll bring in Stern students. Um, and you're essentially looking to provide rec recommendations. Um, to these companies on a strategic implementation plan. Um, past projects have included Housing Works um, in New York City, which is a company that resells used clothing to raise more money, money for HIV AIDS programs. Um, you have uh, the Apollo Theater, which is a world-renowned theater in New York City. Um, you have Harlem RBI, which is an after-school program that provides tutoring and sports programs for urban youth. You have the Shelter Chic, um, which connects homeless pets to foster parents. So I, I think there's a large, uh, a large swath of companies that you can work with within the um, strategy with a social purpose uh, class. So if that's something that, that you're interested in, definitely dig, def definitely dig deeper into that because that's super interesting. And we see a few others coming in through our Q&A box. Um, one being just consulting role, do consulting roles involve a lot of traveling? Yeah, so um, answering that question, yes, consulting roles usually um, involve a lot of traveling. However, it depends very much on the office as well you're working um, on and the uh, type of project you are working on. Also, a lot of this uh, management consulting firms that we mentioned before are really concerned about the sustainability of their uh, employees. So they do good, do good, they do a good job when um, they're actually staffing you 
to uh, understand your interest. So if you've been in a very rough or traveling case um, and you probably raise your hand to say that you want the next case to be a little bit more uh, local or even in the office, they usually take those points into account. So yes, you do travel a lot, but there is some understanding. And for example, in my internship in, in London, I was, in a, I was based in the office. So I actually went to uh, Bain and Company every day and just went to the to the client for uh, specific meetings. So um, there's a question here, how much does a prior consulting experience help in advancing in the industry post MBA? So. I think that uh, the MBA in general, uh, I see it as a as a kind of like um, everyone is is at the same level. Obviously, we had a lot of people that actually wanted to transition within uh, the um, consulting practice to different firms, and I think this definitely helps in the skills that you build in casing. Right? You've been um, before business school. You've been already doing this type of work. You've been um, uh, asked to uh, solve these type of problems. So in that sense, I think you you come better prepared. But once you're in an interview, I think uh, everyone is at the same level and it's actually uh, industry, uh, sorry, it's actually the performance uh, in your interview that will determine if you, uh, if you get a position or not. Question, of, question is, is it harder for older, early 30s students to break into consulting? Is it a myth or is there some truth to it? I'd say that's a myth. Um, one, it's illegal for them to ask your age, so they're probably not going to, they probably won't know your age. And at the end of the day, you're an MBA student, so that's what's most important. Um, they're not really looking at, okay, how old is this person? Um, it definitely depends on your fit and whether you think you can do the work and do the travel. If you're in your 30s and you have a family, it's definitely manageable. Um, but I definitely would say that that's a myth. Um, age is not age is not is, is not a, a deterrent. Um, we have students here who are well into their thirties, um, and then we have students who are well younger than that. And, every, and everybody has landed uh, the type of jobs that they would like to get. So. And I noticed too a question about recruiting for both consulting and finance. Coming from the perspective of someone who worked in the office of career development and saw students juggling recruiting and classes and life in New York City, it is difficult to recruit for both consulting and finance at the same time. However, I'd say that students are able to pursue both interests. If you are first applying for roles in consulting, you can certainly take coursework in finance and you still have access to Stern's faculty member, a number of which are very notable within the finance world. And as we talked a bit about earlier, there is also the opportunity through the full-time two-year MBA to have a summer internship and then make a decision about what type of industry or role you'd have to hope to have post-MBA. And oftentimes that might be the same company or industry that you interned at, but you also can make a switch after that point. So if you had an internship in consulting and we're hoping to pivot to finance after that. We see our MBA twos going through recruiting in the fall semester. So as well as an MBA one, your interviews would happen in January. As an MBA two, if you are hoping to re-recruit, those interviews typically happen in October and November. I see a question here in the live chat that says, uh, two part question, what are the opportunities in the public sector consulting and are domestic candidates preferred over international ones for consulting projects specific to that country? Um, so the to the first question, there are a couple of companies that actually um, have a wider gamut of projects and have uh, specific teams working on specific sectors. So Namdi, I don't know if, if you interacted with any, but I know McKinsey is very big uh, for their public sector. So that's a perfect example where you can actually um, focus uh, your attention to those firms that actually offer um, work in, uh, in that space. Uh, and this was a, a little bit what we were talking before when 
this corporate presentations and coffee chats, it's a great way to actually uh, investigate this. And then secondly, um, the domestic candidate for fur over international, if there is a specific limitation, I know of colleagues this year that worked for uh, the US government, for example, and you have to be a US citizen, then yes, but the great majority of the projects uh, don't have these uh, prerequisites and you are as the same considered as any of your uh, colleagues in the workspace. so much for tuning in and if we didn't get a chance to answer a question please feel free to email us at the account that we are listing through the chat box and you may ask any questions to our admissions team and someone will get back to you within a couple of days However, the second email address that we are going to provide is our student email account. If you have questions about student life at Stern, you are welcome to email the graduate ambassadors and they can tell you more about what life at Stern is like. And before closing, just a, a couple of final reminders. This webinar was focused on consulting specifically at Stern. However, if you are curious about what our campus is like, what our program options are for prospective students, we encourage you to visit campus for an on-campus info session and tour. They're held every Monday through Thursday at 4 p.m. and are led by our current students or members of the admissions team. Um, and looking ahead, we have a few application deadlines coming up and hope to see and learn more about you after one of those dates. So please keep in mind, November 15th is our next application deadline, followed by January 15th and March 15th. So please feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. And thank you all so much for tuning into today's session.